So I met the Vaughn twins, Kiana and Kenya at Video Marketing World. And they were constantly in the comments, supporting the speakers, <laughs> engaging. And I thought like, who, who are these people? They have so much energy and so much positivity. And I, I knew I had to meet them and they offered to be on the show and I was so happy. And um, I think they, they bring light and energy to everything. And um, I couldn't be happier. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my LinkedIn Live. This is Fanny Dunnigan. We, you are tuning in, or I am tuning in from Dallas, Texas. Today, my special, special guest, um, we are going to talk all about health and beauty tips for the workplace and home. Because right now, I think we've been cooped up for so long, and I think we are really struggling sometimes to still live a great life, eat well, exercise. And my next guests are wonderful content creators on YouTube. And uh, they're just amazing people. So I'm going to bring them on. Here are Kenya and Kiana Vaughn. Hey, ladies. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you guys. You guys bring such like energy and positivity That's to awesome. everything. And like, to be here. I, to be here. I feel happy just like being in your presence. <laughs> oh, oh, <yeah>. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I, I love it. I love it that your mom's tuning in. <laughs> yes, me too. Hi, mom. Hi, mommy. <laughs> She's our biggest supporter. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, and so let's just see who else has tuned in in the meantime. Oh, Sarah, Fanny's content has been so helpful. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> hey, Sarah. And there is, there's Mama. <laughs> hey, Mama <laughs> Bear. <laughs> oh. Well, ladies, please tell me a little bit about yourself um, because, and maybe before that even, I just want to let everyone know, but, uh, you know, as you know, lifestyle and beauty advisors, like what are your kind of hair and makeup advice for all these videos that we have to be on, whether it's Zoom or interviews or, you know, meetings, you know, give us some advice around like what we should do just so that we can be more, we can shine through the video. Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. So <laughs> it's, it's funny because you want to make sure that when you are on these video calls, be it interviews or holding business meetings or maybe even pitching your business ideas to, to people, investors, things of that nature, you want to make sure that you are taken seriously. And the way that you're taken seriously is by showing up appropriately for whatever call that is. And so the tips that Kenya and I would love to share with you all are some things that we've employed, which is make sure, especially for ladies, make sure that when you're speaking with people that you appear very bright mm -hmm. and positive and that your hair is pulled off of your face Correct. and that you are in a background or a setting that's not distracting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You wanna make sure that your background is quiet and you want to also make sure that if your background isn't quiet, when the other person is speaking, that you have yourself on mute. That's yeah, very, very important because it can be distracting, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so um, you want to make sure that your space, again, is clean and that your space speaks to exactly who you are. Because yeah. that interviewer or the other person on the other side of the Zoom call, they're analyzing not just you, yeah. but they're analyzing your total environment, you know? And so you want to make, you want to wear colors also that are inviting yes. and that are warm to the eye. You yes. know, um, you want to wear colors that speak business. If you're in a business meeting, if you're in a fashion meeting, you want to wear colors that um, speak creativity. You know what right. I mean? So you just want to make sure that you're showing up in a way in which it's appropriate to whatever meeting you are attending. Mm -hmm. And then I would like to add that if you are if you are uh, showing up for a interview 
Mm -hmm. then you want to stay away from loud and distracting colors. <laughs> and so yes. that could be busy, busy patterns. Do you know what I mean? So you want to make sure that you stick with solid colors. Mm -hmm. And like what Kiana was saying, definitely ones that complement your skin tone. And if you don't know the type of colors that complement your skin tone, then just stick with neutral colors, y'all. <laughs> That's yeah. right. So your neutrals are going to be your yeah. blacks, your blue, mm -hmm. your white, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure if you all know, but white represents clean and mm -hmm. organized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Is that it? laughs> Not that I, I, I didn't, I honestly didn't know what you're about to say. So. <laughs> I passed. Did I pass? <laughs> you passed, Fanny. <laughs> you passed. Red actually represents power, mm -hmm. but it could be portrayed in a bad way. And mm -hmm. so when you're in an interview, um, you just want to be mindful. Yeah. You want to be mindful. Um, so, but hey, Fanny, you are knocking it out the park today. Yes, you have your power so clean, right? <laughs> and then, yes. we, we have to tell the audience what happened, like in the green room behind the scenes, right before we went live. Like yeah. we're all literally like, okay, let's let's do a, like a blazer. <laughs> so we're all in our like matching blazers, everyone. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We want to dress up for y'all. Yes. <laughs> ultimately, it. blue is going to be your safe choice. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Look at that, Michael Smith. Hey, Michael Smith, great friend of mine from New York. He's tuning in. Oh, oh, oh nice. nice. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> awesome. Oh, and this is fun. And Smith says, "We all have to look good from the neck up." Now, actually, right. it's all right. yeah. from, the, from the waist stuff in a way, from actually, right? Exactly. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Another tip that I'd love to add is make sure that you're mm. actually looking into the camera. Yes. yes. And not the computer. Yeah. Because it's it's easy to look at the computer because you're seeing yourself, you're looking at yourself, but you want to make sure that you're giving that eye contact. So just as you would in person, you have to just make a mental note that eye contact for you is going to be the camera in your actual computer screen. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. And like, I, I think one great tip that um, I'd add to that is like when you're speaking or when I'm speaking, then I'll look in the camera. Mm -hmm. And then when your guest is speaking, then you can look at them on the screen. And then that's kind of how you navigate between camera and screen, camera yes. and screen. That's a good tip, Fanny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then um, what about makeup? Any makeup tips um, for when you're on screen and on camera? Yeah. So definitely, as far as makeup tips are concerned, my ladies... You want to make sure that you look alive when presenting yourself on camera. Now, camera can be a little bit tricky because if you are beauty girls such as ourselves, we love makeup. makeup. <laughs> <laughs> and so what that means is that sometimes we can overdo it. You can go overboard. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. You don't want to go <laughs> overboard. So um, during a video interview, you definitely don't want to pile on a lot of makeup on your face. You also do not want to pile on a lot of eyeshadow. Yeah. You want to make sure that your look is very clean. Mm -hmm. uh, so that again, like what we were stating earlier, it's not distracting. And the thing that you have to understand or, or remember is that any and everything can be distracting on a video call. Anything from dangling earrings or hoops that you could wear in your ears, which brings me to another point. Wear posts, <laughs> very <Yeah>. simple earrings. <laughs> just keep things very simple. So as far as makeup is concerned, probably just a light lip gloss or a, a very neutral color for your lips, like a light pink or, or for um, our brown skin girls, mm -hmm. a nice mauve, a nice mauve mm -hmm. color yes. is nice. A neutral mauve color is very, very nice. It's very mm -hmm. pleasant. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think of pink, not too pink, but uh, like a mauve color as like a happy color. Mm -hmm. And so Got because it. you want to present yourself uh, to be this personable uh, individual, but also professional and alive looking, then I would just stick with like a mauve or a pink, depending on what your skin tone is. Mm -hmm. So a little yeah. bit of eyeshadow shadow goes a long way. Eyeliner, mascara. Yeah. You also want to put a little bit of blush on your cheeks that helps you to look alive. And then some foundation, obviously, but don't overdo it. <laughs> and here's a great tip. Ah. One thing that I do at times is I will line my waterline mm -hmm. with a it's almost like a beige color eyeliner. It's mm -hmm. just a great tip for my ladies. And if you have a video call early in the morning, 
that beige color for the brown skin girls anyways will yeah. make you look a little bit more awake yeah in your Ooh, yes yes yeah. yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, yes. Yeah. Even for me, I mean, like I, you know, for the longest time. So, I mean, for those that don't know, I'm a super geek. So for the longest time when I was in engineering, I was a total tomboy and I didn't even wear any makeup at all. Not even like lipstick, nothing. <laughs> and, and now I think like finally, after I got into consulting and all that, I started wearing like a little bit. And even then, like, I, I still hesitate as to like wearing too much because I always feel like I'm not I'm not used to having that on my face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I love those tips. <laughs> Neutral, simple, but <laughs> alive. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Awesome. And then now, actually, just a little background. Like you mentioned, you were you came from a journalist journalism background, right? Yes. Tell me a little more about that. Yeah. So. With myself, Kenya, uh, my background and my degree is in broadcast journalism, and so I've worked in the field. I worked in the field for a number of years, and there are some tips, some things that I would, uh, or some exercises rather, that I would do prior to getting on camera. And wow. so it's it it helps immensely before you get ready to speak to anyone, or before you get ready to give a presentation, or even you know like a video call or interview or something like oh, that. So okay. I'm ready brought that up, Fanny, because I would like to show you some of the exercises <laughs> that I would do before I got ready to get on camera. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Everyone that's going to right now, I want myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's try it. I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Ready? okay. Audience, yeah. hold on. Audience members. Okay. Yeah. You're not live, so you can do it in the privacy of your own home. That's right. I encourage everyone in the audience to be doing this. Okay, let's let's have some fun. Let's do some exercises to get us ready for communicating. How's that? Correct. So this is going to look really weird, guys. Okay, and it's going to feel really weird at first, but I promise it will help you to be able to enunciate your words. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So the first exercise is literally just exercising your face. Mm -hmm exercising your mouth, loosening things up. So I have braces, so it's going to look double weird. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll be weird together. Let's do we'll it. Together. So Fanny, join along. Everyone that's okay. watching, join along. Here we okay. go. <laughs> so what are we doing? We're stretching our mouths? So we're, we're stretching, stretching our, our mouths. mouths. Correct. <laughs> Good job, Fanny. <laughs> So you want to make sure that you open up your mouth as wide <laughs> as possible and then just bring it back in just to stretch all of those <laughs> muscles in there. <laughs> if anybody is tuning in right now, we're doing mouth exercises before communications. <laughs> Nothing else. That's all we're doing. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> okay. I think okay. they're listening. Got it. Okay. So that loosens you up, especially, like I said, if you have a video call early in the morning. Yeah. The second exercise that I would like for you to try, Fanny, as well as all of our guests, this is going to feel really weird, especially it's going to tickle your nose a little bit. It helps again. It helps. Okay. 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 Now, this one is for the voice. Okay. okay. Got it. Go. So Kenya's going to do it first, and then we'll repeat after her. And everyone that's watching, make sure that you comment down below if you're participating. Yes. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up that you're participating. Come on, yeah. everyone. Give me a thumbs up. Tell also, me you're participating. Also, let us know how it feels down below. Like if it feels really weird to you. Okay. Know. It felt really weird to us at first. Here we go. Oh my, I don't even know if I, okay, hold on. <laughs> I don't even know if I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Fanny. You got it, Fanny. <laughs> <laughs> so you start at your bass note, and then you'll just want to hit the top of your range. <laughs> or you can also start at the top of your range and bring it back down to your bass note. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to like sanitize my mic after this. <laughs> oh my gosh! I hope you ladies are doing this, and 
<laughs> or you men are doing this in the audience. <laughs> they are, they are. Chandra Thomas is doing it. Thank Yay! you. Chandra. Yay! <laughs> that tickles. <laughs> And yes, you guys are lucky. No one's seeing you do this. Okay. <laughs> it's a live recording. It's going into LinkedIn forever. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So all that is meant to kind of like loosen us up, right? Yes, if nothing correct. else, it gets us in a good mood, right? Yes, right correct. <laughs> <Happy exercise. laughs> um, any other tips you have around communications during interviews and even at the workplace? Yeah, so um, now this is going to be specifically for my ladies okay. that we have joining us today. But, um, you know, uh, me and Kiana both, we really feel as though it's imperative that women work together, that people work together, that we are united. Absolutely. It's not any time, a time like this that we're in, where, like I said, our, our country is literally in an uproar. Yeah. But for our women, a lot of times we find that uh, women... We all have a competitive nature, but when it comes to women, we like to compete against one another as opposed to working together. I know. I yeah. don't understand that, but yes. Yeah. You never understood it. Yeah. Because you get more done together yeah. than you do apart. So. Yeah. So we're, we're definitely like a girl's girl. You know, yeah. we like to team with, with girls, you know, yeah. just to. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. And so what. We feel as though uh, when women come together in the workplace, if you lean on each other's strength or lean on the strength of togetherness, then it can empower you to make a very viable change. And yes. so what I mean by that is, you know, I may have the strength of time management. Kiana may have may have the strength of presentation skills. Mm -hmm. Fanny, you may have the strength of finance or, like you said, engineering. Mm -hmm. And so if there's a project that we are um, spearheading then we can lean on each other's strength absolutely to get absolutely. that project completed or you know to bring that vision to fruition and so that. we feel as though it's imperative that women work together and we and even in even in the place of a uh, disagreement yeah you know, we can still arrive at a decision that can really foster real change that's right but the magic happens when we walk in unity. <laughs> and that means that sometimes you have to agree to disagree. Correct. But as long as all of you are in the same spirit of getting the project done, mm -hmm. then you do what you have to do to get the project done. Yes. All feelings aside and do what you have to do so that Kenya, Kenya said, change can happen, mm -hmm. you know, and everyone can see the results that they're looking for at the end of the day. And so that may mean that, that sometimes that you may have to have very tough decisions with your teammates to say, hey, well, you know, um, uh, are, you, are you OK today? Or I didn't like it when you said this or am I taking this the wrong way or, mm -hmm. you know, I really value our relationship and I really value our friendship, whatever it is. And so I just want to make sure that like, hey, I want to make sure that I'm not taking anything the wrong way. And so sometimes it's difficult to to initiate those very tough conversations, but sometimes it's needed. And then sometimes you also have to say, is this really worth it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, is it really going to matter at the end of the day is the way that I feel for maybe some small minute thing that couldn't, that may have come across offensive. Is it really worth it? And is it going to affect the outcome? And if you feel that it's going to affect the outcome and, and that it, if it's not worth it, then don't even worry about it. Mm -hmm. Just just keep it moving, you know, and um, and do what you have to do to work together to make things happen, because mm -hmm. that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, yeah. And it feels so much better when you can work amongst a team of people, mm -hmm. you know, who are in agreement, who are in agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it feels so much because when you have a community around you that and you guys and, are like minded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, camaraderie. It just feels really good to be able to affect your environment in a positive way and to know that you guys band together and did it as a team. That's right. Yeah. So I think that there are there has to be some expectations going into it when you're in a team environment, meaning that you grew up in different you come from different walks of life. And so you're not always going to agree on everything. And that sort of has to be an expectation mm -hmm. because if it's not an expectation, you'll find yourself becoming very, very offended 
very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I speak to, we speak to women when we say that, because we know that women have a tendency to be a little bit more emotional than men. Mm -hmm. Not that some men aren't, but, but that's the reason that we're addressing this specifically to women because we can get so much more done together. Turn our emotions into passion and drive. Right. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a big part, like one of my first guests on here is Joanna Wiesinger. So shout out to Joanna. She Mm -hmm. is a strengths finder coach. And so um, there's this thing called Gallup Strengths. And there are 34 strengths in there. And you take a a 20 minute assessment and out of it, you learn your top five strengths. And just like you were saying, like, we're just, we're all strong in different things. And if we just recognize it, and then like complement each other instead of competing with each other. Sure. And it, it, it really does make for a better workplace, a better team, better world. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I so believe that. And, yeah. and even, as, even as we're talking, like, I, I don't know, I, I suddenly got like a little, <laughs> I, I actually got like a little emotional just because, you know, I, I think there should be more open conversations and there should be more dialogue and, and just like this in itself, agree to disagree. We yeah, can right. agree about things, but we can still respect each other and have open dialogue and, and open conversations. Yes, I love right. it. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Any tips for um, interviews, communication tips during interviews um, that you've seen over time? Yeah, so communication tips for interviews that I've seen over time is make sh- so this is what I love to say. <laughs> make sure that you're well studied yeah. um, before interviews. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you you not only study the position, but make sure that you're well studied in the way that you like to portray or market yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. So one thing that Kenya and I love to do, my mom actually taught us this is Make sure that you have a buddy or coach or something that you can sort of do these mock interviews with beforehand. Uh, yes. Practice. Yes. Practice, practice, practice. practice. It, it just, it allows you to be a little bit more comfortable mm-hmm. in front of the, the interviewer. Mm-hmm. Also, you want to make sure that the information that you are portraying is going to be well received. And so, one of the things that Kenya and I love to work on is the the whole notion of being aggressive, assertive rather than versus aggressive. assertive or well, assertive, assertive rather, rather than aggressive. Than aggressive. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's correct. And so being assertive means that you want to communicate your point effectively, right? Yeah. Yes. But you don't want to be aggressive, meaning that you don't want to just cram your ideas or your thoughts down someone else's throat expecting for them to receive it they're not going to receive it Mm -hmm. yeah so if you come across very assertive and very sure Mm -hmm. and very confident in your ability and in your skill set then it is going to be well received Mm -hmm. and so that is that's the tip that i would love to add (laughs) yeah yeah and and even if i were to add to that like i think i think assertive assertiveness comes from the fact that we respect ourselves and we know that what we're about to say, even if it comes from um, a place of like, maybe not an, like coming from a place of confidence and respect for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so we come off assertive. Whereas I think aggression comes off sometimes because we so want to change that other person that like we, we have to, we feel like we have to like change them. And, and that's this aggression comes out. But I think like if we if we just are respectful, then then the assertiveness comes across very easily and comes across very naturally. That's yeah, right. That's You're right. right. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I know one of the things that you both are very um huge advocates for. And I love it. Like I, I watch your latest video lately, right? Like <laughs> this notion of femininity in the workplace. Mm-hmm. Right. This is and this is coming from tomboy, right? Like <laughs> back when I was civil engineer, I literally had like hard hat. It was awful, ladies. <laughs> and, like, jeans and then baggy sweatshirt, and then I would have like those. <laughs> it was like yellow, orange, nylon. Beware! Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. When I'm on site, like <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. Um, and but I I felt like. 
if I if I were to dress any differently, then maybe I wouldn't be understood or maybe I wouldn't be listened to because um, I was in a very male dominated um industry, right? Engineering. And, uh, but over the years, again, like just, just learning to embrace my femininity, like, like, where did this idea of femininity in the workplace come from? And why are you so passionate about this idea? So Kiana and I are really passionate about it because we feel as though it's, it's a lost art in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And especially because you find yourself having to, uh, having to compete or work with your male counterparts mm. and most times in the workplace in a um in a professional setting uh, you in order to get your point across with males and this is no offense to, to our male viewers love you all <laughs> love you <laughs> we need our males we, we need do. you guys yes. <laughs> you guys balance us out yes <laughs> absolutely but oftentimes uh when it when it comes to maybe a male presenting over a female or trying to persuade uh the male trying to persuade a group of people Oftentimes we have to match the male person, the male counterparts and energy. And so Kiana and I are really passionate about this because it's because we don't feel as though you have to match your male counterparts energy by way of being aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, there are ways in which you can get your point across by speaking in a very warm and calming tone. Mm -hmm. And just being a woman, there's a way that you can uh, you can be more assertive, like what we were speaking, the point that we were speaking to earlier, yeah. as opposed to aggressive. Right. And so we feel as though it's, that's a really, really good way to be respected in the workplace and also to be respectable. So for, for instance, if you're working with a team of people, uh, one of the one of the surest ways to get your team on board and to have them. Uh, work for you at 110% is to show that you have their best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. So there was a situation that one of my friends was telling me about, and she is a team lead for her company. And she went to her boss and she said, Hey, I have a situation going on at home. And she said, it's not looking good. I'll probably need to take a, a couple of days off, or maybe I'll just work some half days. I'm here to get the job done. However, things are very tumultuous at home. And I just kind of need you to understand and so the way that her boss responded to her was, well, you still have numbers to hit and you still need to get the job done. Yeah. And in that moment, she felt like, OK, whoa, I give my 100 percent to this company. Right. But this is an, I never step away from my job. I never approach my job from a 50 percent um, type of manner. But in this instance, I really need you to understand what I'm going through and give me that grace. Right. And so her manager and she was a woman. Her manager was unable to do that in that moment. And so as a woman, because we can be a little bit more sensitive and we can be a little bit more emotional, it's it's easier to lean into our empathy or sympathy, depending on what the situation is. Yeah. Yeah. And so we feel like we feel as though femininity, it, it really does go a long way when you're working with a team of people, because it's 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 the surest way to show your team members that you really care about work life balance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what else? What are some of your other advice and how do we how do we nurture femininity in the workplace from from our own perspective? What can we do ourselves? So in addition to that, like what we were stating earlier, just working together, you know, as mm. a team uh, with other females in the workplace empowering each other mm. is big and this doesn't just go for empowering other women that's being encouraging to your male counterparts as well showing up with a smile on your face mm -hmm. you know yeah. um making sure that you're you're ready to go you're ready to get the job done but that you are presenting yourself in a respectable way mm -hmm. by way of not putting each other down mm -hmm. or putting your other counterparts down or your teammates down but mm. by um being positive by being encouraging, by empowering each other, things of that nature. Uh, so it, it definitely goes a long way. And like I said, if you want your team to work hard for you, yeah. definitely show that you care. Show that you have their best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I wanted to just share with people this. Uh, this is your video on how to be feminine in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And this is a great video for those of you out there that believe in that and that think um, and I love the tips that you had in there, right? It ranged all the way from like, you know, 
connecting with other women, recognizing their strengths, um, and even dressing like a woman, right? Yeah. Bright colors and um, mm -hmm. just, I love that. I, I believe in that nowadays. Like, you know, for the longest time I resisted that and I, I now embrace it, like embrace our differences, right? Embrace our femininity, mm -hmm. so vital. Yeah, it is. And that can be anything from, you know, because I mean, it, we're taught just because of what we see on television and from what we see from our parents that are in corporate America. We're taught that, you know, when you show up, you know, you wear the nice, clean, crisp suits. And not that there's anything wrong with that. But yeah. most times, because what we see before us are our fathers or the males entering into the workforce, mm -hmm. we see black suits or brown suits yeah. or, you know, blue. But yeah. we don't we don't see we oftentimes we don't see how a woman presents themselves or shows up in the workplace. So there's nothing wrong with wearing a suit, but it can be in, in a pastel color mm -hmm. or yellows or pink, something bright and vibrant. You can even wear a black suit if if black suits your fancy, but throw on like a pink camisole underneath, something like that. Something yeah. that shows that you are a female. You don't have to look yeah. exactly like your count, your male count. Yes. <laughs> it shows a softer side. It shows a softer side. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Love yeah. That. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. How many of you guys, what are your thoughts? Comment below. Let us know what your thoughts are around femininity in the workplace. Share in the comments below. We'd love to see your comments and have a dialogue around that as well. Now, another thing that you both do, um, or actually, was it, uh, I think it was Kiana, right? Um, <laughs> pardon me. I'm, I'm, I think I got it. Kiana, <laughs> the okay. thing that you do, I think, is the, um, you really did a lot of research around energy boosting foods, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us more about that, because I'm very much guilty of being at home, especially around this time, the three, four o'clock time when like I already had my lunch, it's not quite dinner and I'm grabbing for junk food. Yes. Um, but you were sharing some great ideas about energy boosting foods. Let us know about that. What is that? So energy boosting foods. Okay. So I'd like to start out by saying this. Think of food as medicine. OK, <laughs> think of food as you always have to analyze whatever you put into your mouth. Give it give it about five to 15 minutes. Mm. Ask yourself after that 15 minutes, how do I feel? Mm. OK, mm. if you find yourself feeling more sluggish than you did before you picked up that snack. Yeah then you probably don't need to consume that. <laughs> I didn't need to consume those Doritos. <laughs> or, or that piece of chocolate or that scoop of ice cream. <laughs> right? Those would be the... Eh. <laughs> right? Tell me what I should have instead. Everything in moderation. <laughs> I love my chocolate ice cream, Fanny. So I know what you mean. I was actually going to say that. So I'm glad that you said that, Kenya. Everything in moderation. But if you have a goal, especially as we're in this time where we're doing these Zoom calls or we're interviewing and things of that nature, if you have a goal and you want to make sure that you need as much or that you have as much energy as possible to be successful in your goals from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., for instance, then you want to make sure that you're not eating any foods that's going to make you feel lethargic. Mm -hmm. And so I'd love to share with you all some of the energy boosting foods that I gravitate towards. Um, one is bananas, mm -hmm. because bananas have a high, um, it's hot, they're high in sugar. Um, you do have to be careful mm -hmm. with that, not to consume too many because it is high in sugar, but bananas would be a great fruit for you to eat first thing in the morning. It mm -hmm. sort of boosts your energy and your metabolism. You also want to make sure that you're drinking lots of water. Cold water is also known to sort of um, um, increase your heart rate and sort of it'll, it'll get you going in the morning, okay? Another energy boosting food is berries, you guys. It's full mm -hmm. of antioxidants and energy. Berries, oranges, mm -hmm. you have your vitamin C with the oranges, you guys. Nuts, mm -hmm. seeds. Pumpkin seeds, um, almonds, walnuts. It's good for protein and it's good for energy at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Chocolate is not bad, I'll say. So if you got if you got little pieces of chocolate and you made your own trail mix or you picked up a trail mix, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I'm not I'm not here to shame you guys for doing that. But as Kenya stated earlier, everything in moderation. And dark chocolate is definitely going to be much better than than milk chocolate. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Awesome. Yeah. So those are some of the energy boosting foods that I gravitate toward. I'd love to also mention that for myself, I don't drink coffee because I'm up here one minute and then I crash <laughs> within like four or five hours. Yeah. And so if you are looking for a great alternative, pick up vitamin B12. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You take it first thing in the morning and your energy, it, it, your energy will sort of wean down naturally throughout the day, but it's, it's in a very natural not progressive, but regressive, I guess, is the word. Uh -huh. yeah. Progression, <laughs> natural. <laughs> yeah. yeah, got it. Oh, great tips. Yes. And I think the thing is to to have them in the house, right? Like to have them ready. Yes. Um, I know that's one thing my, my exercise coach always says, like, don't have the Doritos, yes. have the bananas, have the berries ready. And then I'm grabbing for that instead of grabbing for for the junk food. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's actually a good tip. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe you can treat yourself when you're done with your goals for the day or you're done working. You go and grab uh, two scoops of ice cream, not the entire pint. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I, I, I did learn something about myself recently. Um, and I think... Uh, just to be a little vulnerable at this point, I think like sometimes growing up, like I think we or I, um, Asian culture is not very expressive, right? Like just generally my mom and dad are not very expressive people. And I think they show their love through food, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you know, instead of saying I love you, they're handing me a plate of food, right? Or dumplings they made or a special dish that I love, right? And so I think a kind of buried into my psyche or not to get all philosophical or psychology, psychology here, but like, I think I associated food with love for a long time. Oh, wow. And I think I always um, like, so when I'm like feeling low or whatever, like I eat, cause then I equate it to love. Right. Um, I mean, I, that's, I, I learned that about myself, so it's not, it's not the case anymore, but I think that's one thing that I learned is sometimes I think we, we equate food to something or an emotion and um, and it's not always the case. That's I think that's very important. Yeah. yeah, you do. You have to analyze your relationship with food and ask yourself, is this is am I really hungry or am I in need or want of something else? Mm -hmm. yes. So yeah. it really does take for you to do some uh, take a hard look at yourself. Yeah. You know, journaling may help if you find that you're that you're hungry and you don't need a snack. Drink yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There you go. In journal, just to get yes. those down, because you may just be feeling some things that just may need to come out, or call a friend and talk to a friend yeah. about it. You'll be surprised the difference that it makes. You won't even have a hunger for for those chips or anything. And again, there's not that there's anything wrong with it, but no. everything no. in moderation, guys. We want you to be yes. here on this earth for as long, for a long time as possible. Possible. Yes. <laughs> And I'm just going back to some of the comments here, back to our topic around femininity. Chandra Thomas said, femininity should be embraced in the workplace. As yeah, well. right. Totally agree. Pam Galley sharing, this is all great advice and reminder of how to stay relevant in the workplace. Thank mm -hmm. you, Pam. So true. Uh, Danielle saying, let's draw a line between pressure to fit in and authentically standing out. Ooh, I love that. Oh, Authentic. Love that. Thank, you, yeah. Thank you, Danielle. Yes. Being ourselves and being received for who we are is such an inclusive and warm gift. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's respect and acceptance, right? And so and prevalent you. in all parts. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Turn down our phone volume. I know. I pulled up the comments. I'm like, oh. Uh, I'm and Mama, Antoinette, love oh, Barry. Yes. 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 We're to engage with our audience here. Like. Yes. I know. Like, the, this coordination of LinkedIn Lives is like, okay, yeah. phone with the comments and then uh -huh. <laughs> the screen. But it's all good. It's all super fun. 
And then another thing is, so that's our foods, like energy boosting foods. You also talk about like energizing kind of home exercises we can do, right? A lot of times we're just sitting in our chair all day and staring at the computer screen. Mm -hmm. What are some energizing home exercises we can do to kind of like get our heart rate up? Yeah, no, absolutely. So here's what I do a lot of times is 15, if you're taking a 15 minute break, right? Say you're yeah. on, on, you're working, you step away for a second to take a 15 minute break, yeah. do jumping jacks, mm -hmm. okay? So you can do jumping jacks right there in your living room yeah. or you can run in place. Yeah. Um, another great thing that I love to do is I love going outside because sometimes like just looking at the walls in our house can become depressing yes it can <laughs> okay especially during this time when there i mean the stay-at-home order has been lifted but we're still a little bit more apprehensive about going so out cautious yeah. yeah absolutely we're still cautious and so go outside take a walk power walk i love to power walk i'll get some three to five pound weights in my hands and I'll take a walk around the block and then I'll come back and I'll get on the computer and finish my work. Getting that vitamin D, that sun, it nourishes your skin and it just nourishes your body, you guys. And then it also makes you just feel great. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Like there's something about walking out and even just like, I, I get such a different feeling from just sitting in the backyard and looking at the tree versus my electronics and my phone and my computer just to have a break. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Definitely. And, and even so for my women out there, we know that um, a lot of women want to um, lift their gluteus maximus. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Terms, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so a great, for, for great us exercise. over 40 years old. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Tell, tell, tell us. Tell you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, one thing that you could do is take a break and do squats. Mm -hmm. Do squats mm -hmm. for like five minutes and challenge yourself to say, hey, by the end of my work day, I'm gonna do 100 squats. And so if that means taking a break every hour for 15 minutes and doing squats, maybe with some hand weights, do that. Or you can get down and do glute bridges. And that helps as well. So anything to sort of boost your heart rate mm -hmm. for all of my ladies or men and women who have bad knees do low impact exercises, yeah. meaning that you can modify a lot of your exercises. If you don't want to do jumping jacks, do the motion of jumping jacks without jumping. If you mm -hmm. don't want to run in place, just do um, high leg kicks. Yeah. You can do that. That also increases your heart rate. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you can't power walk outside, um, maybe because the, the pavement is too hard for your knees and walk at a slower pace. Yeah. But what would help to increase your heart rate is make sure that you have those hand weights. Make sure that you're, you're, you have those hand weights going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because then you'll still be, um, effective in your walking. If you're power walking versus if you're just slowly walking with the hand weights, you'll still be just as effective. Okay. It. So Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> all great reminders, all mm -hmm. great reminders. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing, right? Like, parts of it, we know already, we're just not doing it. And if we just yeah. keep on getting these reminders, I think, to motivate us and to to go out there and do something about it, then the better. Um, and so that we all live healthier lives. Yeah, that's Thank right. You. I'd also like to mention that if, if there are any families out there that have children, and you can't leave to take a walk, invite your kids in. Yeah. You know, or maybe you put them down for a nap when it's time for you to, to have your break and, and do these energy boosting exercises. But kids love doing things with their parents. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I love Make them do jumping jacks. <laughs> I still do. Get rid of their energy. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Of yes. family activity <laughs> you're just creating memories no matter what it is just just be mindful and create those memories i love that and, if, awesome. and at first if if you're not used to uh taking a break to do energy boosting exercises and set an alarm on your phone or on your calendar yeah that's yeah good. yeah yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah like a little ding just to kind of get us out mm -hmm. of it yep yeah mm -hmm. oh gosh this i mean 
it just flies by the, the no, hour. No. <laughs> but one thing that that I'm super passionate about, and I know that you guys are as well, is you know we we create content, right? We're all super passionate about creating content. You on YouTube, me on LinkedIn, and and in all its different forms, right? But you know, from from your perspective, like why is it so important to create content and to share our voice? Yeah, certainly. It's important to create content and share our voice because we're important. Mm -hmm. We have a message that needs to be heard. Mm -hmm. Every single person on this earth has a purpose yes. and is the reason why you were created. And for whatever reason that is, the world needs to know it and the world needs to hear it. Mm -hmm. yeah. As long as it is for good and that you are making other people feel empowered, mm -hmm. then you will be surprised those blessings will come back to you tenfold. And so whether if it's Kenya and I sharing our message on femininity and fashion tips or someone else or Fanny sharing her message regarding her experience in the workplace as a civil engineer, we need to hear it. I need to look at Fanny and say, wow, as a woman, I can be a civil engineer. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then for Kenya and I, another young woman need to be able to look at us and say, wow, we can be content creators and be successful. Wow. Yes. You know, and so representation Role is models. Yeah. Important. Role models. Correct. Role models. Exactly. And yeah. that's why we feel it's important to be con content creators, especially in this day and age where people are turning to sources, sources such as Google and YouTube as the number one search engine yeah. for the and for their information, you know yeah. what I mean? People are no longer reading books like they did back in the day. Like for myself, I'm going to be honest, I'll pick up an Audible in a second oh, yeah, before yeah. I sit down and read a book. Um, yeah. and, and and I love reading books, but yeah. Audible books are more convenient for me yeah. and my life. Podcasts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Listening to broadcasts, exactly. You yeah. can just pop on your earphones and keep doing what you're doing and just listen and retain all of that information. And so mm -hmm. I think that's why it's important to be content creators, especially in this day and age. Yeah, and in addition to that, what I'd like to add is we, we're firm believers that you don't go through things in life for yourself. That's right. You oh, know, you go through say that one more time. I love that. One more time, you know, please. So you don't go through things in life just for yourself. You know, um, some tests or trials or tribulations that you may find yourself in is for you to come out on the other side, learn the lesson that God has that God wants you to learn, and then teach someone else or mm -hmm. or uh, share that with someone else so that you can prevent them from having to walk down the same road that you did. That's right. So, yeah. you know, I mean, we, oh, goodness, we go through all types of things. And so it, what better is it than to encounter someone that's going through the same exact thing that you went through and you can encourage them from that same exact situation or perspective to help them to hurry along in their journey or in their process. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So and it definitely you know, be able to tell your story. Mm -hmm. just, just like you're saying, like when we share our stories, I, I still remember the only reason I got into engineering was because a female engineer came to our high school mm -hmm. and told us about the profession because up to that moment, I'd never even heard of engineering before. Oh, wow. And, and it was because this woman, I don't even know her name, but like in a way she changed the course of my life because mm -hmm. she came there and shared this talk about women in engineering. And as a result, I was like, oh, I like math and science. I like how solving problems and being analytical, right? Like, and I thought, oh, I can do that. And I never even knew about the profession of engineering. And because she shared her story on that day in the library at my high school, I went on to, to get into engineering. Wow. So like the, the power of story, right? The power of sharing. Yeah. Representation, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, and then let me just go. Chuck said, wisdom through experience. Share your right. stories. Absolutely. Right. Right, Chuck. Yeah. And so I would like to end this session. I mean, the time just flew by. I don't know how it flew by so quickly. I just <laughs> um, but, you know, right now during these challenging times, like, what are both of you most grateful for, right? 
Um, oh boy. Well, first, firstly, life, life, family, family, definitely our health, our Mm -hmm. health, you know, you take for granted the fact that you can wake up in the morning and Mm -hmm. have breath in your body, in your lungs, Mm -hmm. have air in your lungs. Just, you, you take those things for granted in, in, in a, in a time in which some people just were not as fortunate. That's one thing that I am so grateful for. Mm -hmm. And so it teaches me to be uh, more responsible with this vessel that God has placed my Mm -hmm. spirit in Mm -hmm. um, and my soul in. So family, family, definitely. Yeah. They're our biggest supporters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mama, mama's in there. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I'm calling you. I hope you're not offended. (laughs) That's what I call my mom. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. (laughs) So good. Yes, yes, family for sure. We spend. We've been spending a lot of time with family, right? Mm -hmm. We. I'm. I'm able to eat dinner with my husband and and two kids every night. Yeah, and for so cool. long, we've been running around to basketball practices, after school activities, you know, sometimes my husband's traveling. And so like, it's just, we're always running, running, running. And so for the last three months, we've been able to just sit and have mm-hmm. dinner together every single yeah. night. And essentially that's doing what? That's creating memories. Memories. You know? I was going to say that. And mm-hmm. so, you know, your kids and you guys will always have something to look back on during one of the most tumultuous times. You know, uh, you'll be able, they'll be able to look back on that and say, this is how we made it through. That's this right. is what we did to keep things sane in the in household. household, you know, uh, and essentially home. Sorry, is- not- <laughs> you just, you finished the center. <laughs> oh, <God, no. laughs> oh my gosh. That's such, a- <laughs> such a twin thing. <laughs> I know. Oh True. Yeah. We can push each other's sentences <laughs> all the time. Oh, I love it. I love it. And even Kana, Kana Rogan says, this is so such refreshing, so refreshing and helpful oh, information yeah. that it is person. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And I think I think that's the whole point. Like we are so we're so multidimensional, right? Mm-hmm. We have our work. We have our family, we have our home, our the foods we eat, the exercises we do, we're, we're just multidimensional. And and I love that you gave us all kinds of tips from head to toe, <laughs> to from hair to makeup to our mindset to our dress, <laughs> energy, foods, like what didn't we cover? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And that we could be of service. Definitely. Yes. We got you. We got you. Let us know if you have any last questions for Kiana and Kenya here. Um, we are just so grateful for their time and so grateful that you're able to join us. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, yes. family is so important. Chuck says, Amen. Absolutely. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. And so, Ladies, I so enjoyed my time with you both. Thank you so, so much. It is such a pleasure. And um, you really do shine light in dark places. And um, I want to thank you both for your time and your energy and your light. Thank Thank you so much, Fanny. Thank you for the opportunity. Definitely really enjoyed this interview. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, definitely.